I want to talk a little bit about Mamu, a social business fashion company, and I want to talk about how this brand became a movement. From the outside, we are a very normal fashion company. We work with beautiful models, which you can see in Milano and Paris. We have amazing designers working for us. But inside, inside we are different. Inside, we are doing social business revolution. The whole company's business objective is to support mothers in need. Mothers who have to combine childcare and earning money at the same time, but who can't find a job due to the fixed working hours on the job market. So what we are doing is we're supporting those mothers, training them how to work and how to produce our fashion items. And, oops, it's going in the wrong direction. And, uh, we are training those mothers and show them how to produce our fashion items. We show them with lawyers how to set up a micro pro production company. We give them bags of textiles. And whenever they have time at home, they can produce our items. And in a very short time, our brand reached nearly one million people via media. And in Latvia, suddenly, the yellow press is talking about social business because from the outside, we're a, a fashion company, and from the inside, were different than any other company. We started with a small investment of around four or five hundred dollars, and we spent around one hundred dollars on marketing. And I want to tell you about nine things I learned how a brand can become a movement. First of all, it always has to start with you, because you have to be passionate about this, what you're doing. This is very important. You should love this, what, what you're doing. And I love working for Marmo, and I love fashion. So that's why it was easy for me to convince other people to join the movement uh, Marmo. And of course, it has to be social, because if you're social, then you reach the desires which people all have in themselves, or sometimes you reach with these desires which people weren't even aware of. Because if I would run a company, and my goal would be, for example, that I buy myself a nice new sports car, it would be very difficult to convince people to join this movement. But since it's social, we managed to reach a lot of people joining our brand. It's also important that you're telling a story, an exciting, interesting story. If I tell a story which is not remarkable, nobody will listen, nobody will uh, spread the message. So we make the media of mostly to part of our movement. We give them a nice package telling them about our principles, about our products, about the designers, and they always become part of the movement and they start spreading it so we very quickly can reach out and reach the people who are important. And it's also very important that you're doing and yet that your art. If I would have designed, for example, the scarf, it would have looked like this. And so it's very important that you always work with creatives, with people who are amazing in what they're doing, and that's why the scarf looks like that, because we work with a very nice and talented uh, designer from the Baltics. And you have to be transparent. You should communicate and tell the people where the money goes and how it's been produced. So we tell everyone what the mothers are getting, what the textile is costing, how much money we are taking and re investing into our company, and we even are training the people how to produce and how to fake our products, because if somebody starts producing our products and realizes, wow, it takes six hours to produce one scarf, they'd rather buy one. So that's why we do it. And sixth, it's very important that you give and that you take opportunities. The moment where I realized that Marmo is something different and that's becoming a movement was the moment where a student of mine, Jelena from the Stockholm School of Economics, came to me and she said she would like to do a photo shooting for us. And I said, yeah, please do it. You can shoot the brand Marmo with the eyes as you see it. And suddenly the next photographer came and the next photographer came and the next one and the next one. And in a very short time, we made hundreds of pictures with amazing, very known and talented photographers. And one has to be innovative. In the beginning, we only had a couple of 100 euros, and we didn't know how to make a nice market booth when we presented our brand. So I went to the Art Academy in Latvia, and then I asked an artist, listen, you have these beautiful sculptures. Couldn't I use them to present my products on this market, on this fashion show? And she said, yes, for sure. And now we put it into a new context, and we created something which is innovation. So nowadays, when the media is still talking about this fashion show, they always show those pictures of our market booth because they were the most beautiful and it didn't cost us any money. And to be joyful, very important. If you do something, you should do it with a lot of joy. This shows a very nice campaign. It cost around $20, 20 euros, and it was the first walking wall of fame in the history of a wall of fame. We had a wall of fame and we were on a very nice um, 
on a, on a very nice festival in Latvia, and nobody wanted to stand in front of the Wall of Fame and get photographed. So we had this walking Wall of Fame, and we spotted some celebrities. We ran after them, jumped with the walking Wall of Fame behind them. We took a scarf, wrapped it around them. We had three photographers shooting pictures of them. We wrote down their names and address, put them on Facebook, and tagged them. In the beginning, we were running after the people. On the end, the people were running off after us. So be joyful. Number nine, again, be joyful, because it's really important, that's why I want to talk again about this. This is, for example, a campaign, it's called, it's fucking cold, but thanks God I have a scarf. And we made this picture with a nude girl, a friend of mine, and she was naked in the winter, and we made a picture, and a, and a radio moderator, he announced that the listeners should send in pictures of people wearing scarves and showing how good is it in winter, and somebody posted then the picture of a dog wearing a scarf, and then the next picture of a dog wearing a scarf, and we got all these pictures of, pe of dogs wearing scarves. On the end, the moderator had to say, please stop sending in those pictures of dogs, it's not about this. So that's all for now. Thank you very much and join the movement.